In the majority of his book, The Inheritors, William Golding writes from a Neanderthal man's point of view. And from this unique point of view, Golding provides insight into his own interpretation of Neanderthal thought, communication, and confrontation with early modern humans. Based on Golding's interpretation, I'll provide three hypotheses surrounding the nature of Neanderthals and analyze these hypotheses against what researchers believe. The three hypotheses are, one, Neanderthals were capable of a complex spoken language, two, Neanderthals believed in a religion, and three, Neanderthals had violent confrontations with early modern humans. First up, language. Golding has his Neanderthals communicating with each other through spoken language. He writes most dialogue using simple sentences and short commands, implying that Neanderthals were capable of such ideas like theory of mind and complex thinking. Here's one example of the dialogue. Neither Neil nor Ha was to be seen, and the forest beyond the fall was already darkening. They are carrying too much wood. Fa made an agreeing noise. But they will bring big wood up the slope. Ha has many pictures. To carry wood on the cliff is bad. Here we see examples of Golding using simple sentences. Golding also uses the word pictures as a substitute for a variety of abstract ideas like memories, dreams, and thoughts. And while of course Neanderthals didn't speak English, Golding shows that his Neanderthals were capable of complex language, complete with phonemes, which make up morphemes, which are used in syntax. And the syntax of his Neanderthals follows English subject, verb, object order. So how does Golding's take on Neanderthal language compare against academia? Here's the main idea researchers would repeat behind that answer. Language does not fossilize. In their paper, Neanderthal Language, Just So Stories Take Center Stage, the authors Berwick, Hauser, and Tattersall refute another paper claiming that Neanderthals were capable of language. Berwick and co. write, The anatomical capacity for speech cannot by itself be taken as a proxy for language. The peripheral organs have to connect with the internal, phonological, syntactic, and semantic representations, and nothing in the fossil record is ever likely to tell us a. what those representations were like, or b. whether the human brain had yet formed the necessary connections between phonological representations and vocal output. And boiling that down, while the fossil record can show insight into Neanderthals having proper organs for speech, much more goes into speech than what the fossil record can provide like the proper brain functions for articulating and recognizing speech. And in their concluding paragraph, Berwick and co-write, for the present, abstinence from speculation may be the best remedy. So while yes, Neanderthals potentially had the anatomy for speech, they also needed the necessary brain power to use those speech organs, which scientific evidence cannot provide. In his paper, The Talking Neanderthals, What Do Fossils, Genetics, and Archaeology Say? Sverker Johansson reinforces much of the same ideas discussed in Berwick and Co.'s paper. However, Johansson opts to say that some form of Neanderthal language was present, while still prefacing the paper by saying, language does not fossilize. Thus, the evidence bearing on Neanderthal language is necessarily indirect, and bridging theories are required in order to make inferences about the presence or absence of language in an extinct species. So with this, the best answer to the original hypothesis is this. It's a possibility, but it's unable to be completely proven. On to the next hypothesis. Neanderthals believed in a religion. Golding has his Neanderthals believe in an ice witch goddess named, and forgive the potential mispronunciation, Oa. Liku, a female Neanderthal child, always carries an Oa figurine on her, and Locke sees firsthand the magic behind Oa when accompanying Fa at a religious site near their base camp. So how does this religion compare to the actual nature of Neanderthal religion, if there even was one? According to one paper, it's impossible to conclude Neanderthals regularly buried their dead, since fewer than 100 possible Neanderthal burial sites have been found in Europe, the Middle East, and Western Asia. And from these graves, it appears not much effort was involved in the burials, since grave goods are generally not found, and the grave sites themselves are fairly shallow. The paper's author then says maybe Neanderthals perceived death differently. In his journal paper analyzing the phenomenology of religion, C.J. Arthur uses the inheritors as a major point of comparison. He concedes that the book is well informed, while also saying that it's not a source of scientific fact. He differs from Golden concerning the main idea of his paper, prehistorical religion. Golden does not rely on the fabrication of erroneous details. Its accuracy established, and something of its nature illustrated, it remains to consider what this kind of procedure has to offer religious studies. Accurate though it may be, the inheritors cannot be relied on 
as a source book of information about the religiousness of early man. Arthur says that Golding's own religious views likely influenced his fictional Neanderthal religion, yet he praises his efforts in pursuing an area of research knows little about. Thus, the answer to our hypothesis, again, maybe they had a religion, or maybe they didn't. And while the inheritor's religion is fictional, it's still an authentic imagining from Golding. And the final hypothesis, Neanderthals had violent confrontations with early modern humans. It's proven that Neanderthals and humans interacted. Up to 4% of Neanderthal DNA is present in today's humans. We also know that Neanderthals and early modern humans crossed paths during a span of 10,000 years and had low-level interbreeding. A mosaic of populations in Europe during the Middle and Upper Paleolithic transition suggests that there was ample time for the transmission of cultural and symbolic behaviors, as well as possible genetic exchanges between the two groups. However, the source of Neanderthal extinction remains unknown. Researchers have proposed a wide variety of probable causes, including violence and disadvantages in competition. So Neanderthals and early modern humans likely had violent confrontations, but it's probable that violence is only a small part of a larger whole.